Hello, and welcome to the fourth instalment of our collective read-through of The Mystery of Edwin Drood by Charles Dickens, his final and unfinished novel published in 1870. This month we will be reading chapters 13 to 16, and I shall read you a little something from chapter 14. I hope you enjoy it. Christmas Eve in Cloisterham. A few strange faces in the streets, a few other faces, half strange and half familiar. Once the faces of Cloisterham children, now the faces of men and women who come back from the outer world at long intervals, to find the city wonderfully shrunken in size, as if it had not washed by any means well in the meantime. To these, the striking of the cathedral clock and the cawing of the rooks from the cathedral tower are like voices of their nursery time. To such as these, it has happened in their dying hours afar off that they have imagined their chamber floor to be strewn with the autumnal leaves fallen from the elm trees in the close. So have the rustling sounds and fresh sense of their earliest impressions revived when the circle of their lives was very nearly traced and the beginning and the end were drawing close together. Seasonable tokens are about. Red berries shine here and there in the lattices of minor Cannon Corner. Mr and Mrs Tope are daintily sticking sprigs of holly into the carvings and Scotses of the cathedral stalls as if they were sticking them into the coat buttonholes of the Dean and Chapter. Lavish profusion is in the shops, particularly in the articles of currants, raisins, spices, candied peel and moist sugar. An unusual air of gallantry and dissipation is abroad, evinced in an immense bunch of mistletoe hanging in the greengrocer's shop doorway and a poor little twelfth cake culminating in the figure of a harlequin. Such a very poor little twelfth cake that one would rather call it a twenty-fourth cake or a forty-eighth cake to be raffled for at the pastry cook's terms one shilling per member. The waxwork which made so deep an impression on the reflective mind of the Emperor of China is to be seen by particular desire during Christmas week only on the premises of the bankrupt livery stable keeper up the lane and a new grand comic Christmas pantomime is to be produced at the theatre, the latter heralded by the portrait of Signor Jacksonini the clown saying, how do you do tomorrow? Quite as large in life and almost as miserably. In short, Cloister Ham is up and doing. Though from this description, the high school and Miss Twinkleton's are to be excluded. From the former establishment, the scholars have gone home, every one of them in love with one of Miss Twinkleton's young ladies, who knows nothing about it. And only the handmaidens flutter occasionally in the windows of the latter. It is noticed, by the by, that these damsels become within the limits of decorum, more skittish when thus entrusted with the concrete representation of their sex than when dividing the representation with Miss Twinkleton's young ladies. Three are to meet at the gatehouse tonight. How does each one of the three get through the day? I wonder how much Dickens is describing his own experience there. You can borrow a copy of The Mystery of Edwin Drood from Medway Libraries. You can also download the ebook immediately. Please do join us at the Reading Drood blog. There's a good amount of background information and some intriguing questions to help you make the most out of the book. And do join in at the lively debate going on at the Reading Drood blog feed. Thank you.